I am Dr. Liz Wallace. I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. We are currently working with the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust that funded this study, as well as collaborators at the Cape Luther Institute, um, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. The bone fishery in the Bahamas is uh, a big economic driver, obviously. Um, beautiful location, fish that are exciting to fish for, it's a big draw for tourism, and uh, there's protections in place in some locations, and we're interested collectively in protecting and um, supporting the fishery in order to allow that to continue. And currently we are in Great Exuma, just outside Georgetown, um, collecting data for our bonefish genetic study. Um, which is part of the Bahamas Initiative. Uh, it's a program funded by the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. And our current objectives are to tag uh, adult bonefish um, in order to document um, recapture locations, dispersal, um, that sort of information. In addition, the genetic component, we are collecting fin clips from adult and juvenile bonefish. And we are interested in determining how closely related populations of bonefish are um, among different islands within the Bahamas chain. So we're collecting in Exuma, as well as some of the other islands in the um, greater Bahamian region, in order to understand how closely related um, these individual spawning groups may be and how much self-recruitment there is uh, within a individual location, such as Exuma. Um, or how much dispersal is occurring from one island to another um, via the uh, bonefish larvae that are planktonic. My name is Aaron Schultz and I'm the director of the Cape Luther Institute. Well, many suspect that they're a keystone species, but no one's actually been able to show that. But they are very important to the nearshore ecosystem. They move in and out with the tides. They're like little vacuum cleaners that hoover up uh, invertebrates and fish as they move on to the flats, and then they transport uh, nutrients off of that ecosystem. We've done about 10 years worth of catch and release angling studies on bonefish, and we developed a pamphlet on best handling practices. And this is um, one way that that we disseminate that information. So we go out to the various islands and, and pass out information on how to best handle fish, as well as um, gather more information on bonefish. My name's Dr. Owen O'Shea, and I'm the research associate with the Shark Research and Conservation Program at the Cape Luther Institute in the Bahamas. Stingrays are mesopredators within coastal food webs, which means that they sit in the middle between the top level predators and the lower uh, primary producers and primary consumers. They make up quite a large portion of biomass, um, of the fish biomass in these regions, and through coastal degradation and uh, incursion by, by humans, um, their habitats are becoming modified, degraded, and in some places fragmented. Through their predation behaviour, they physically modify the environment through beating their pectoral fins and blowing jets of water into the sediments in order to access their prey. So not only are they having a biological impact on invertebrate communities in these coastal and nearshore ecosystems, but they're also physically modifying the environment. And in some habitats, they may be considered a keystone species. So this means that they're incredibly important for ecosystem function and they may be used possibly as indicators for ecosystem health uh, and therefore are ecologically significant to every ecosystem in which they're found. One of the main goals of the Southern Stingray Research Project is to assess long-term site fidelity habitat use and seasonality in a range of different coastal environments that these animals can be found in. But one of the other interesting questions that I'm hoping to answer is how habitat fragmentation is going to impact on population connectivity of this species. Currently we're in Great Exuma where we've been sampling southern rays at Hummingbird Key and some other 
sand flat areas in the north of the island and this is to try and assess how populations between South Eleuthera which is 70 miles northeast of here and populations here are genetically related. There are barriers to dispersal of this race because they give birth to live young so it would be interesting to see how the connectivity of the Exuma island chain between Eleuthera and Great Exuma influences the distribution of this species. Mm -hmm.